Hardly anyone has ever heard of them, and yet they are among the greatest astrological discoveries of our time. The Galilean Moons It's no coincidence that Jupiter shares its name with the King of the Gods. Not only is it the largest planet in our solar system, with two and a half times the mass of all the other planets combined, but it also hosts some of the largest moons of any solar planet. Jupiter's largest moons are known as Galileos. They were all discovered by Galileo Galilei, the famous Italian astronomer, and named in his honor. He made his discovery between January 7th and 13th in 1610. Using his improved telescope, which he had constructed himself, he observed what he described at the time as three fixed stars, completely invisible because of their smallness. All three of these luminous objects were near Jupiter and lay on a straight-line trajectory through it. With the means available to him at the time, this discovery is a true feat and proves that Galileo Galilei was very far ahead of his time. By the way, all other moons of Jupiter, like the fifth one, Almathea, with a diameter of 93 miles that was discovered only in 1892, don't have nearly the size of the Galilean moons. Their total mass is barely one part per thousand of that of Europa, the smallest Galilean moon, despite 59 other satellites counted. If you like our videos, feel free to support us with a thumbs up, subscribe to Simply Space, and get ready for many more fascinating videos in the future. What planets are included in the Galilean moons? They include Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto, and are the fourth, sixth, first, and third largest satellites in the solar system, respectively. Together, they contain nearly 99.99% of the total mass in orbit around Jupiter, and are located about 250,000 to 1.2 million miles from the planet. Outside of the Sun and its eight planets, they are also among the most massive objects in our solar system. With radii larger than any of the dwarf planets, and thus occupying unimaginable proportions. Not planets, but moons. Later observations showed that these stars were changing their position relative to Jupiter in a way that was inexplicable to scientists and absolutely not consistent with the normal behavior of other stars. On January 10th, Galileo noticed that one of them had disappeared, an observation he attributed to the fact that it had wandered behind Jupiter and was hidden by it. Within a few days, he concluded that they were orbiting Jupiter and were in fact its moons. Incidentally, Galileo Galilei's telescope, with his handwritten note indicating the magnification power of the objective, is on display in an exhibit of the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia. Also, the Galilean moons shine so brilliantly that they can be observed today with very simple tools such as binoculars or a layman's telescope. The Medician Stars On January 13th, Galileo had discovered a fourth moon and named them the Medician Stars in honor of his future patron, Cosimo II de' Medici, Grand Duke of Tuscany, and his three brothers. Simon Marius, however, a German astronomer who also claimed to have found these four moons, prescribed the names Io, Europa, Ganymede, and Callisto after the beloved of Zeus in Greek mythology in 1614. While these names fell out of favor for many centuries, they were commonly used to refer to Jupiter's moons until the 20th century. Together, they also became known as Galileo, in honor of their discoverer. Io The innermost moon is Io, named for a priestess of the Greek goddess Hera, the guardian of hearth and fire, who in Greek mythology became the lover of Zeus, the father of the gods. With a diameter of 2,263 miles, it is the fourth largest moon in our solar system. With over 400 active volcanoes, it is also the most geologically active object in the solar system. 
Its surface is dotted with over 100 mountains, some of which are higher than Mount Everest on our Earth. Unlike most satellite planets in the outer solar system, which are covered with ice, Io is composed mainly of silicate rock surrounding a core of molten iron or iron sulfide. Io has an extremely thin atmosphere composed mainly of sulfur dioxide. Its distinctive feature is a pronounced volcanism, and here it surpasses all other bodies in the solar system. The most striking features on Io are hundreds of volcanic craters, ranging in diameter from a few feet to about 250 miles in size, and in some cases, miles in depth. In addition, there are countless small holes and lakes of molten sulfur. The sulfur deposits and its compounds make for a fascinating spectacle of different hues, giving the moon an exceptionally colorful appearance. Europa The second innermost Galilean moon is Europa, which takes its name from the mythical Phoenician noblewoman who was courted by Zeus and became the Queen of Crete. At 1,939 miles in diameter, it is the smallest of the Galilean moons and slightly smaller than the moon. Europa's surface consists of a layer of water surrounding the mantle, probably 62 miles thick. The uppermost part is solid ice, while the lower part is thought to be liquid water that becomes warm from thermal energy and the tides. If this is true, then it's possible that extraterrestrial life could exist in this subsurface ocean, perhaps near a series of hydrothermal vents in the ocean's depths. Europa's surface is also one of the smoothest in the solar system, a fact that supports the idea that liquid water exists beneath the surface. The lack of craters on the surface is attributed to the fact that the surface is young and tectonically active. Europa is composed mainly of silicate rock and probably has an iron core, as well as a thin atmosphere composed mainly of oxygen. Europa's unique feature is crisscrossing trenches and furrows, called lineae, that extend across and furrow the entire surface of the moon. These cracks and furrows strongly resemble the texture of our terrestrial ice fields. The smallest are only a few centimeters wide, while the largest extend about 12 miles. Ganymede. Next in line is Ganymede. With a diameter of 3,270 miles, Ganymede is the largest moon in the solar system. While it's larger than the planet Mercury, it has only half its mass due to its icy nature. It's also the only satellite planet in the solar system known to have a magnetosphere, probably formed by convection with the liquid iron core. Ganymede is composed primarily of silicate rock and water ice, and a saltwater ocean is believed to exist nearly 124 miles below Ganymede's surface. Although Europa remains the most likely candidate for such a body of water on its surface, Ganymede has a large number of craters, most of which are now covered with ice, and has a thin oxygen atmosphere containing O, O2, and possibly O3, or ozone, as well as some atomic hydrogen. Its metallic center suggests that Ganymede had higher temperatures in its interior at the beginning of its formation than researchers had previously thought. Ganymede actually appears to have a similar structure to Io, except that it is additionally surrounded by a shell of water and ice. Callisto Callisto is the fourth and most distant Galilean moon. With a diameter of 2,995 miles, it is also the second largest of the Galilean moons and the third smallest moon in the solar system. Callisto is named after the daughter of the Arcadian king Lycaon and a hunting companion of the goddess Artemis. It's composed of roughly equal parts rock and ice and is the lowest density satellite planet among the Galilean moons. Investigations have suggested that Callisto may also have a subsurface ocean at depths of more than 62 miles below the surface. However, these studies have not been finally confirmed. Callisto is also one of the most heavily cratered satellite planets in the solar system, the largest of which represents the 1,864-mile-wide basin known as Valhalla from Norse mythology. It is surrounded by an extremely thin atmosphere consisting of carbon dioxide and probably molecular oxygen. 
Callisto has long been considered the most suitable site for a human base for future exploration of the Jupiter system, because it's farthest from Jupiter's intense radiation. Since the 1980s, Callisto has become the focus of scientists and is considered a possible target for human spaceflight to explore new moons and planets. Because Callisto lies outside the radiation belt around Jupiter, it's ideal for implementing this plan. One reason given for choosing Callisto as a possible target was its robust geological conditions and its fairly close distance to Earth compared to other moons and planets. In addition, Callisto has raw materials for the supply of water and fuel, which could be useful to the astronauts. However, several basic requirements are necessary for the realization of this mission, including, first of all, an extensive exploration by an unmanned probe that will start around 2025. A sensational discovery. Needless to say, the discovery of the Galilean moons caused a great stir among astronomers. At that time, scientists still believed that all celestial bodies revolved around the Earth, a belief that was consistent with Aristotelian astronomy and the biblical canon. Knowing that another planet might itself have bodies orbiting it was nothing short of revolutionary and helped Galileo argue the Copernican model of the universe, also known as heliocentrism, in which the Earth and other planets revolve around the Sun. What's your opinion? Do you think the Galilean moons have potential to serve as alternate planets for us to survive on because of their water resources? Feel free to leave us your thoughts in the comments.